everybody, I'm Maria, this is Sean, a rather shy Sean, and we're from the Richardson Simple Living. Today it's cooking day and we've decided we're going to do a broccoli quiche. It's sort of a last minute decision because we weren't sure what we were going to do. So we've done most of the prepping ready to try and save some time. And so what we're going to need for this quiche is um, some onion, some broccoli and then we're going to need some eggs and milk to make the mixture which to pour over that and cheese on top so what you're going to do first of all is pop the where are you i'm doing the cooking lesson forget it's her lesson we're going to pop the onion into a pan i'll bring the pan over there you are if you want to Put the onion into there then, Sean. We'll put some water in and we'll boil it. I'll just turn the thing on, cooker. It's getting carried away then and taking over the cookery lesson. <laughs> Forgetting Sean was there. <laughs> That's it. Just pop it all in there. And we'll pour some cob on. We'll just turn the tap on. Got you a bit close to the sink there. Perhaps I should take you back a bit. We don't want you all getting wet. <laughs> so we'll put some water in there then, shall we, Sean? I'll just give it a good covering over with water. Put enough water in because we've got to add the broccoli to it. So we'll put that on to boil behind us. Put the lid on because that'll bring you up to the boil quicker. So we'll put that in there for washing. That Once it's up to the boil, I think it'll be a couple of minutes to do that. I've already run through all of this with Sean prior to us starting. So, um, and then we'll add the broccoli to it. So we'll just put that to one side now. But what we can be doing while we're waiting, Sean, or what you can be doing, is rolling out the pastry. So put, We've already cleaned everywhere, we've just had a bit in there. It's like a snowstorm. <laughs> now, if you just sort of go around a bit so it spreads it out a little bit, and we'll get you the pastry. Again, we've made the pastry beforehand in my magic machine. <laughs> that was just um, eight ounces of plain flour, two ounces of margarine and two ounces of lard if you use lard but in our case it was um yeah in our case it's like um a stalk baking not lard but type that's that type of thing and then um, i think it was just 60 ml of water so whizz it in my machine and we get perfect pastry balls so do you want to roll this out you've done pastry for you might want to roll your things up or you'll get all covered in flour. You will, yeah. I remember last time you looked like a snowman. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Roll your thing in like before. You might want to flip that over so we're well coated in flour so we don't stick. And we're going to roll it out nice and big because we've got to fill high tip. I think I've got a nine inch flan dish. What I will do, what I haven't been doing so far, but I think I ought to do, is in the description down below, just jot the recipe down in case anybody wants to make anything that they've seen us making. I'd never thought about that before, I don't know why, because I, I go through it all, I never thought to write it down, but it might be a nice idea for me to write. What? Just a minute, Charlotte. When you go so far, turn it round like that so it gets more flat, and then you can go that way. So it keeps making it round. Oh, my, uh, well, not mine, but Sean's maths books have arrived. So perhaps tomorrow, if I um, get some time, I'll show you them. I call blue maths books I think well, they, they are all blue on the cover so I keep wanting to come blue maths books so I don't know if that's because I've seen that's what they're called or whether it's the colours making me think of the blue I 
pretty sure that's what they're called. Let's go again, shall we? Now look, we've got to get it all round. Don't worry about all the excess pastry, I'll just help it not stick to the thing. And then what we're going to do, do you think that's big enough for that? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if you roll it over there, then you lift it and bring your flan dish under it. Huh? Oh, will you bring the flan dish then I'll lift it. Met with a hood. <laughs> uh, push the back a bit and set it away from the edge. So then um, put it in a bit. That's a lot of flour, aren't we? <laughs> That's it. How's that looking? All we need to do is cut the excess. Do you remember how we did that before? And we mm -hmm. cut this excess off the edge of it. We just need a sharp knife to do so. Do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. We can still have a go at doing it. See where it's... Which way round are you better? Going that way or do you like to whistle in that way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, if we start that way... Take it from the edge, see, and you cut it round so you get rid of the excess. Do you want to have a go at that? Just get rid of the excess. That's coming lovely, yeah, that's great. Keep going round like that. We're trying to cook, cook, cut our cooking vlogs down a bit because I think sometimes they take far too long so we're trying to prep a bit beforehand and put it down a bit. Alright. That's it. Oh I put hot washing up water in there. A bit hot. Right. boiling yet. I think that's going to take a while to boil actually. It's all right, gives us a chance to clear this mess away here while that boils. That's great. Okay, we'll just chuck away all the excess, there's not really much excess there. Away, and we'll have to clear all this flour up. This over here. Wash yeah. that. Just need to have uh, tons of flour. <laughs> so yeah, we've lined the case ready now. So it's just a case now. We're waiting for the um, onions to come up to boil. It says to give them a couple of minutes and then Sean can add the broccoli into it then. And again, we give that a couple of minutes. Then we'll need to drain it. So I suppose it gives us a bit of time to sort of tidy up as we go. But still, this flight goes under all the pots. Paste. Nobody needs to make paste with flour and water when you're a child. See some steam, it might be coming up to boil, which is quite good. So our onions are done now, they've been on for a couple of minutes, so we're going to add the broccoli now. So Sean, we've got the broccoli here. Um, I'll spin the camera around so you can see Sean. 
Um, do you want to hold the broccoli? Right, let's. Uh, oh dear. See if I can get you in focus. There we go. Right, Sean. If you watch how it over slowly, but watch you don't burn your fingers on the steam. Just tip it in. Be careful you don't get it everywhere. That's it. Then that's it. It's all going lovely. Okay, is that everything? That's great. So. What we can do now then is pop the lid on that. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll give it a stir around. We've got you all over the place today. Give it a quick stir in the water to mix it in with the onion. And we'll put the lid back on. We'll bring that back to the boil a bit. And then we can leave that for another couple of minutes, see Sean? So we'll leave that a couple of minutes now and then we'll come back to it in a minute. So it's all done now. I'm going to tip it into the drainer. Not pulling the just get a cloth to pick up the thing. You can't see me. I put it down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to tip it because it's red hot water and Sean doesn't trust herself with it. <laughs> and we'll, we'll tip it through there. See that all going in. I'll have to just get a spoon just to scrape some of that out. Oh, the onions and the onions. <laughs> the kitchen smells of onion. And we're all steamed up. All that in there so that will drain. I'll put the pan in the dishwasher. A good hot wash will get rid of the smell of the onion from it. Pop it in there. Okay. Right, so we'll leave that drain a minute. And while that's draining, we'll get Sean to do the egg mixture. So bring you back up so you can see us again. Um, did I bring a jug out? Yeah, we've got a jug. What I'm going to do, it does say quarter of a pound of milk and three eggs, but because I've got rather a large dish, I think it's a bit larger than it recommends, I'm going to double that. So I'm going to do half a pint of milk with six eggs. So if we just find some milk first. Got to bring the milk out. So, Sean, if, do you want to measure off the pint? Put my glasses on and show you where the pints are. See where it says off there? Mm -hmm. That's where you need to measure it to your milk, okay? Cool. You see that shocking finger there? They like me, I have to go down there because the light comes on it better to see. Yeah. Yeah, where it says off. If you take your milk to that level, Sounds a lot though, putting six eggs in it. But if we're doubling it, I suppose that's what we need to do. There you are, they are. Let's smash it. There we are, that on. <laughs> I'm actually bigger than you, Sean, when you're down there and you. Oh, God, I'm on my knees. It's been a long time since uh, I've been taller than you. That's <laughs> it. Right then, let's have a look what you've got to do next then, Sean. Do you want to get a little cup and a fork out so you can beat your egg? Let's have a look. So just beat the egg, so if we go for six of them. It's a good way of using some eggs because we've got quite a lot of them at the moment. Right, so do you want to do them one at a time? Break it and then beat it and tip it in with the milk. That's funny shit, right? Yes. So uh, I got all my eggs on the tray and I like to bring them forward so the ones that need using first are at the front and put the fresh ones behind. 
now, as I've took some off, I was just bringing them forward if you wondered what I was fumbling around behind you doing. <laughs> So just give it a nice quick beat, tip it in there and do that. That's it. Just do that with the next one. Just give it a stir around with your fork. That's lovely. Next one. I think Sean's mastered this egg cracking very well. I remember the very first time I did it the eggs sort of broke everywhere and there was egg all over the place. It took me ages to actually crack one well, but Sean seems to have done it straight away. I don't think you've ever gone wrong with one yet, have you? I don't recall. There you go, just give it a quick whisk in with the other, do a quick beat round in the milk. That's it. this a little shake, make sure it's all draining nicely. Do you want to go to wipe your hands? Because the only thing with doing this with eggs is your hands do get sticky, mm -hmm. don't they? Yeah. Use a wet cloth just to get the stickiness off your hands. There you go. Put a bit more of that. milk and just scrape it out up a little bit like that so I can so give it a nice good whisk round in the thing. Same again. Do you want me to put them in the bin for you? Save a bit of time, won't it? I was asking Sean if she wanted to do cooking one week and art the following week. Then do them, roll them over like that, art cooking, art cooking. So we could film and do some art and that because we'd never seem to be getting time to do any art lately. Time we've done our other lessons, we never seem to have much time for art and crafts. But she said no, she wanted to keep the cooking each week. So I was quite surprised because I thought, oh, she might not want to. So we'll have to find somewhere where we can squeeze some art and craft time in. I thought we did it after German. We used to, but it's, we seem to spend a lot of time doing our German now, don't we? Yesterday we was running late. Um, we spent a lot of time doing our German. Because originally we started with music as well, didn't we? We had music as Sean was um, learning different songs each week on her keyboard and then she was going to do the same with the um, recorder but we never got as far as the recorder did we we started with the keyboard and gradually that's one um that sort of tailed off we never got no time i think what it is when we get working on these school walks we talk oh sorry i've not got that in the bit here we get talking quite a lot about different subjects and one thing leads on to another and you start googling things and doing other things and whatnot. You do just run out of time. So we're gonna to have to make some time somewhere for all these things. Probably eventually when we drop subjects, maybe we'll do more then. Because originally you wanted to be an artist, didn't you, Sean? Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to be now, she's changed. Well, very originally, she wanted to be a paleontologist until she realised she had to have maths, and then she said, I'll forget that. <laughs> so that's when you went into art, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Give it a nice big stir, make sure everything's really well stirred this time. And we'll bring our flan dish over. I tell you what we'll do. We'll, we will flavour it a little bit. We'll just put a bit of pepper in, a little bit of salt in, but not too much because don't really 
or even putting salt to a food and give it all the rest. Oh, there you are, the cloths there, look, Mr. Can. Right, Jan, before we pour all this in then. Just mix that in well. Just put a bit of black pepper in. Make sure it's all stirred in very well. Right, okay, so, um, what we'll just do then, Sean, bring your flan dish over, look. Maybe we just want to wipe the side first. Put that in the dishwasher. Do you know what I've been doing today? Normally we turn the dishwasher on in the evening after the tea and I wash my breakfast pots by hand but looking in the dishwasher it's really quite full. So I don't know what we've been doing today. Right then Sean, that should be nicely drained now. So if you want to take that, sprinkle it onto your base. And we need another fork just to you know, thing out about your pocket. And you can use that to bring scrape it out and just level it all around. That's it. <laughs> Flick it in the kettle. I'm going to have a shot when we have the next cup of tea. Tasting the onion. And that's it. Scrape it. You've got some of that on there. Look, scrape it out with your fork. Do the flat end of your fork. It'll be easier. Just scrape. Doing it that way, but you turned it round, haven't you? What are you talking to? Like using a spoon, I mean. How would you use a spoon? That's it. Now, if you just pop that in the bowl, I'll hand wash that. So, what you just need to now is spread it all out evenly around your bland base. So, it's, it's all covered everywhere. Into your corners and mattocks. Oh, Sean! <laughs> Oh, stop it with the fork! <laughs> right, that should be okay, I think. So what we're going to do now then is pour this on. Keep hold of that. Just give it another whiz. Look. Right, then pour this on all around it, so it's all covered. I'll put it over it in case it drips up. That's it. Pour it all in. Can everybody see? <laughs> She stood here, one hand pouring and one hand in a pocket. I said, make sure you get around there and there. Pour in on the edges. That's lovely. Um, pop that. Just put it on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we'll just pop some cheese over it now then. That looks disgusting. It looks disgusting. Sean's a very finicky eater. She doesn't really eat anything much. Sean's weekly meals consist of, well, you eat, eat. You eat ham, don't you? Mm -hmm. She eats ham sandwiches, jam sandwiches, and cheese sandwiches. And she'll have a bag of crisps with them. Breakfast, she'll eat brioche rolls. Um, occasionally toast and occasionally cereals, don't you? But tea time, tea time. If we have a pasta dish like, um, well, any pasta dish really, with anything in, she'll only eat pasta. She'll have no sauces whatsoever. She'll just have some dry pasta. A couple of mouthfuls of dry pasta. You put a bit of sprinkled cheese on the side of the plate and a bit of cucumber, and that's it. She won't have nothing else. She'll eat some fries eat some fries and you'll eat hot dogs and that don't you mm -hmm. um she doesn't eat sunday dinner she'll only eat wraps you have to make a wrap what do you have in your wraps ham and cheese and ketchup ham cheese and ketchup for a sunday dinner and that's what she ate for christmas day dinner and boxing day dinner because she won't eat a roast dinner <laughs> she used to eat some of the potatoes and she used to eat um, Yorkshire puddings, but doesn't touch them now, doesn't touch them. So, and this is how we go on all week. If she has a pizza, she'll have a takeaway pizza and she'll eat pizza from Tesco's. They do their own little small plain cheese pizza, she'll eat them. 
but no other kind. What else do you eat? <laughs> Can we think of anything else? Oh, a baguette. She'll eat a baguette. Um, again, with cheese or ham in it. And you like salad and lots of cucumber. But that's it, really. That's it. When she was a baby, she wouldn't eat anything, only chocolate. I had to take her to the doctors and complain. They kept saying, oh, it'd be all right. So she'll be fine. It's just a phase. And in the end, when I'd been going to the clinic for a good three or so years, I mentioned it again, and they ended up having to give her vitamins because she just wasn't eating anything. But now I give her vitamins too. Right, so do you want sprinkled cheese on here? Now I'm giving you a life story of how awkward you are for eating. <laughs> Hopefully, in a few years' time, I'll come back and say, do you know, Sean, she eats everything. But I did have another son like that. <coughs> he didn't eat a great deal. <coughs> but now he eats good. Right, if you want to cover it with some cheese. Turn so the camera can see that you're not covering up what you're doing. You have to bring the cheese to this side of it. There we go. Cover it all over with cheese. Nice and covered. I mean, does anybody else have awkward eaters? What are all your children like for eating? I suppose it's very few children that do eat everything. I think out of mine, only two actually did eat everything you ever gave them. Carl was, yeah. Yeah. My firstborn, he ate everything, and I thought, oh, this is great, this is a doddle. Then the second one didn't. <laughs> Jaden yeah, didn't like eats everything, does he? Yeah. My grandson. Apart from tomatoes, he won't actually eat tomatoes. But I have got a grandson that he doesn't eat anything either. He only eats um, fruit, and then it's limited, like strawberries, things like that. Covering this really well with cheese, lots of cheese. There we are. I think they'll leave it at that. A little bit there. Can't see the egg. It's covered with cheese. So right then, so now pop the glasses back on so we can see reading. We need to pop it into the oven now on gas mark five, which has already been on warming. And we bake it for roughly 45 minutes until it's golden brown. So we're going to pop it in the oven and then, um, I'll do that now. Hopefully that should set. I better open the oven door for, this is a bit like an egg. Custard with the egg mixture in it. Put that in. And now I can time that. Right, we'll give that 45 minutes and we'll come back to it and show you what it's like when it's done. So we'll see you in a little bit. Hi, the quiche is done, so I thought I'll just show you what it looks like. Turn you round. There we go. That's cooked nicely. Red hot, but looks nice. So I'm going to leave that to cool down now. Um, I write down the ingredients and instructions down below, and um, I shall see you now. Perhaps tomorrow, I'll show you the maths books that have come for Sean. We'll have a quick look at them tomorrow. So, bye for now. See you tomorrow.